Welcome, welcome. Welcome everyone to the Georgia Virtual College Fair Program. We've got an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this afternoon. Um, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and get started, but I, before that, I have just a few housekeeping items to mention to you. You'll be able to use the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. So make sure you put those questions there. And I would advise you to list the college name in your question so they know who you're directing your question to and they can answer appropriately. So just make sure that you put your the college name in your question. Uh, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off. And so our panelists can't see or hear you this evening. And so that's why it's, um, just we're advising you to put those questions in the Q&A. Um, this, this presentation is being recorded and so you will have the opportunity to hear, um, hear it on demand um, within a week at that same website where you registered. And I hope that you sign up for some more sessions because there's more tonight um, and tomorrow as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to our presenters. You're first gonna get to hear from Louisiana State University. Hello everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Alejandro Ramirez and I am with Louisiana State University. Um, just pulling up my uh, slides. Um, so I am the Regional Admissions Counselor for Louisiana, specifically for the state of Georgia, and I am based in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so I've got a limited amount of time to speak with you this evening, but if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is at the uh, top bar of the slide, uh, and then I will also be on in the Q&A section throughout the evening as well. Um, so I'll just jump right into it. So LSU is located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we are considered a large public university with about 25,000 undergraduate students. As a flagship university, we are considered in the elite 1% of universities in the nation. But what really sets our academic reputation as an elite 1% institution is that LSU is one of only 22 institutions in the nation uh, to hold the land, sea, and space grant research status. LSU is also one of only eight universities in the nation to, hold, uh, to have our own medical school, dental school, veterinary school, law school, and an elite MBA program. We have also been ranked number one in the SEC for return on investment. Some of our more popular majors that we are most known for are our health science programs like biological sciences, kinesiology, uh, the pre programs for pre med, pre athletic training, pre physical therapy, etc. Um, we're also pretty well known for our engineering programs like mechanical and petroleum engineering, our business programs like accounting, finance, um, you know. Uh, uh, what is it, uh, auditing, etc., cetera, um, but also our pre-law program to go along with our law school. And while these are what we are most known for, we have many more amazing programs here at LSU, and you can find them all at lsu.edu backslash majors. Uh, we do require freshmen to live on campus. Uh, however, we also guarantee freshman housing, so there's no need to rush your decision on where to go to college to make sure that you secure on-campus housing. We take that right off the table for you. Uh, and then overall campus life is thriving with over 450 student clubs and organizations to get involved in, like Greek life, pre-professional programs, and club sports. We've got them all covered, uh, and with so many, we have an event going on pretty much every week, almost every day. Uh, and just a quick fun fact, we have a live tiger on campus. Students love to go visit Mike the Tiger in his habitat right by our football stadium. Uh, so let's talk about the application. You can find our application exclusively on the Common App, and we review our applications holistically. If you're not aware, holistically means that we take every information uh, into account. So whatever you want to send us, uh, whether it's additional letters of recommendation, your application essay, etc., cetera, um, we definitely want to see it. So we have a few deadlines for our applications. First up is December 15th for our priority decision deadline and February 1st for our regular decision deadline. December 15th is also our priority deadline for scholarship consideration and for the Honors College. And neither require an additional application. Scholarships are automatically reviewed for at time of admission uh, and honors, you only need to check a box or it's a yes or no question on our general application and we will know to review you for the Honors College. 
Uh, we do require your high school transcript and at least one letter of recommendation from an academic source to, com to complete your application. Uh, and feel free to send in additional letters of recommendation, the application essay, like I mentioned, um, and then definitely your extracurriculars uh, for review in our holistic review process. Uh, and we highly recommend this, again, due to our holistic review process. Uh, for a good estimation on your chances of admission, uh, you can check out the middle 50% of our admitted student profile, uh, which is about a 23 to 28 ACT, an 1120 to 1320 uh, SAT, and about 3.4 to 4.0 weighted GPA. So if you're taking those honors, APs, IBs, and dual enrollment classes uh, that give you the boosted grade, that's the GPA we review. And then students who fall within these ranges have a really good chance for admission because or historically, this caliber of student has been admitted. Um, so we're not quite test optional yet. We're waiting for final approval from our uh, president, the administration, uh, the Board of Regents, et cetera. But we anticipate being able to offer that soon. And in the meantime, our advice to applicants is to start and submit your application regardless of the scores that you have on hand. Um, so if you can take a test safely, go for it. If not, stay safe, we understand. And due to our holistic review process, we've already started to discount the weight of scores in our review. And we, re and we realized that the effects of COVID-19 uh, may have affected your ability to take the SAT and ACT and just overall other aspects of your high school career. Uh, so I'm here to tell you to focus on what you can control over stressing over what you can't. You know, we understand that this has been a year unlike any other, and we're here to work with you in navigating the admissions process. So again, if you ever have questions, you are always more than welcome to reach out. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, also due to our holistic review process, um, you know, we've already started to discount test scores, and we also have other items that you can submit to us um, to help out, uh, to help tip the scales in your favor in our admissions process, like the additional letters of rec, like uh, your extracurriculars and your community involvement. Um, and I believe I'm closing in on the end of my time, um, but again, I will be available to answer your questions in the chat throughout the rest of the night. Um, and you can always feel free to contact me via email and phone call, et cetera, at the top. So um, thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you so much, Louisiana State University. Next up, you get to hear from Tennessee Wesleyan University. All right. Hello, everyone. Can you see my screen okay? Okay, good deal. All right, so my name is Lindsay Macon. I'm one of the freshman admissions counselors here at Tennessee Wesleyan University. And I actually got my degree from Tennessee Wesleyan University back in 2018. I got my degree in communication studies. So any question that you might have about Tennessee Wesleyan University that you'd like to ask, I have my contact information at the end of this presentation, but feel free to leave me any questions in the Q&A portion. I'd be happy to answer. So Tennessee Wesleyan University is a small private liberal arts university and it's located in Athens, Tennessee. And just for those who don't know, um, it is located right in between Knoxville and Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, so that gives you an idea right up I-75. Our Lindsay, students, yes. I'm so sorry. We don't yet see your full version of your presentation. I'm really? Sorry. No, no problem. No problem. All right. How about now? Not yet. I think if you click update now, well, if you click from the beginning, you should be good. Try this again. Technology, right? Like I'm no good at it. Sometimes it, that's it okay. works just right, and sometimes it can just be so finicky. Yeah. Completely close me out of uh, my PowerPoint, so that's okay. I'm just going to keep rolling and try okay. and pull it up at the same time. And we'll get there when we can. Um, but we do offer over 60 academic programs. Um, and uh, we do have our top majors on campus are business, nursing, exercise science, and criminal justice. Um, as I'm trying to work on this, I'm going to close my video off and try and work on that at the same time. But um, for those of you interested in any major outside of those four that I just listed, uh, just let me know in the comment section below and we'll try and get you more information for those specific programs. Um, other than that, we have a little, a little over 1,100 students. So with that, um, our class sizes tend to range between um, 17 and 25 students. 
Um, that's just on average. Um, in my senior level classes, I actually got the opportunity to have a class with only three students in it. So that makes prime opportunity for you to connect with not only your professors, but also your peers really early on at Tennessee Westland. Um, another great thing that we do offer um, our students is the opportunity to get involved on campus really early on. We have a student, a day of service for our students to take advantage of. So um, we take a specific day in the fall semester and then also in the spring to take our students out within our community and to um, serve. Um, and there's also service learning opportunities as well. So just keep that in mind um, when you're coming to Tennessee Wesleyan. Okay, let's try this again with a PowerPoint able to see anything at all i can absolutely see your screen but we see no just presentation the, we see the just presentation the but it's just the um the small version gotcha um well we're just going to continue to go on um and yep. if yeah yeah um, so affordability is a big thing for us at tennessee wesleyan university um, 99 percent of our full-time day students receive financial assistance um, and we have TWU Merit Award scholarships ranging from 8,000 all the way up to full tuition. As soon as you're accepted at Tennessee Wesleyan, we will review that application uh, to see what scholarship you will qualify for. Um, so just because you're an out-of-state student, don't feel like you can't afford us. We don't have out-of-state uh, out of state tuition, so keep us in mind with that. Also, feel free to check out our True Cost Calculator on, on our website um, and um, know that we are here to help you every step of the way at Tennessee Wesleyan. As far as student life goes and our athletic programs, uh, we have over 20 athletic programs. We compete within the NAIA uh, Division II um, sports. So if you're interested in an athletic sport, please visit our athletics website and you can contact the coach through that. Um, other than those things, we have five residence halls on campus to get you involved with our campus community. We also have a student center dedicated to student life. We call it our hub of student life that's brand new, built in 2018. We have a gaming studer, gaming center within there, student success center, group and individual study areas. So um, that's something you could look forward to. And we also have an on-campus fitness complex just for our students. Um, and finally, how do you apply? You can go to tnwesleyan.edu backslash apply to apply. It's a completely free and um, you have zero deadlines to worry about, no essays either. Um, all we require is a 2.25 unweighted GPA and an 18 on the SAT, a ACT or a 950 SAT. We do also have test optional admissions so you can review those policies um, on our website at tnwesleyan.edu. Um, again, you can contact me at any point. I know that this video went a little wonky, but if you ever wanted to Zoom me individually to learn more, you definitely can. And I'll go ahead and throw it back to the next presenter. Thank you so much, Lindsay and Tennessee Wesleyan University. Next up, you guys get the opportunity to hear from the Citadel. I always do that. I was muted. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Mallory Moore. I am the regional admissions recruiter for the Citadel. So I am located in the state of Georgia. Um, start off, we're just going to watch a quick. Well, my video will not work for some reason this evening. Um, so we'll just keep moving forward. Technical difficulties tonight. Um, so just some fast facts about the Citadel. We are a senior military college located in Charleston, South Carolina. So it's about five to five and a half hours from Metro Atlanta area. Um, we have been ranked the number one public college in the South for 10 consecutive years by US News and World Report for up to a master's degree. We offer 30 undergraduate majors and 39 minors. Um, we are a military college, like I mentioned um, previously. We offer ROTC in all branches, including the Coast Guard. Only 34% of our graduates um, end up going and serving in the military. The other percentage of our students just go on to work in the civilian sector. But all of our students do live on campus um, for, the full, for the full four years. They wear a uniform, they get military training, um, and live in a military-like uh, lifestyle. Um, something that we like to highlight that even due um, to the COVID-19 pandemic, our 2020 graduates 
at an 80% employment rate at graduation with an average salary of $56,800. And we do participate in NCAA Division I athletics in the Southern Conference. Here's a list of our majors, um, just to highlight a few. Our engineering school is ranked number 19th in the country. Um, we are in the process of building a brand new business school on our campus. Um, and we're constantly, um, as our student population grows, we're adding uh, majors um, as well. So Intel and security studies is a new major, I'm sorry. Um, Cyber operations and intelligence and security studies is one of our newest majors that we offer. And we have a lab on campus that was funded by the National Security Agency. And we have students each year participate in FBI internships, CIA internships, and get recruited by those agencies as well as agencies like the Secret Service um, that participate in those majors. Um, here's a list of our minors as well. Um, due to our um, rigid and military-like uh, lifestyle on campus, it is normal for many of our students to double major. We've even had several triple majors as well as pick up minors. So we do have several students that pick up minors in uh, foreign languages, uh, especially if they're going on to serve in the armed forces. Here's our class of 2024 profile, uh, 2024 profile um, average uh, SAT score was an 1122, average ACT was a 24, and average GPA um, was a 3.8. Um, where our students come from, 54% uh, of our students do, um, came from the state of South Carolina this past year. That was a higher number than years past, and we do think that was due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is typically 50% in-state, 50% out-of-state. Um, as far as male-to-female ratios, um, we have only been accepting females at the Citadel since 1996, and the percentage has grown quite a bit. We are now up to 12% uh, female population. Uh, when I was a cadet and from 2011 to 2015, we were around 6%. So it has grown quite a bit. Um, this past uh, freshman class had our largest female class of 87 uh, females and 609 males. Um, so typically we bring in a class of around 700 students each year. In regards to financial aid and scholarships, our largest sum of scholarships comes from ROTC scholarships. Um, as I mentioned previously, we offer all branches of ROTC. Um, so in regards to ROTC scholarships, you can apply for the national ROTC scholarships. Um, and then we also have ROTC scholarships on our campus at the Citadel. So we offer four-year, three-year, and two-year scholarships. Um, we also have athletic scholarships. These are gonna be um, where you're recruited by coaches and you must be NCAA eligible. Um, and then the FAFSA is also open to any of our seniors here. It opened in October. Um, our merit-based scholarships, um, for this year, the requirements are a SAT of a 1300 or ACT of a 29 and a GPA of a 3.7. Um, all of these students that qualify um, and apply to the Citadel this year, they'll be invited we're doing a virtual scholarship um, events where you compete against other applicants um, to receive merit-based scholarships. Um, some next steps um, for any of our seniors here is to go online. We are not on the common application. We have our own, own application at citadel.edu slash apply. We are waiving the SAT and ACT test scores for this uh, upcoming admission cycle. However, if you are seeking um, merit-based scholarships, um, you, are not, you are not eligible for the merit-based scholarships if you decide to waive your test scores. We are also doing uh, virtual and on-campus visit options as well to anyone looking to come to Charleston and um, doing virtual visits as well. And here's just my contact information and I'm gonna pass it on to the next presenter. Thank you so much, Mallory. Um, don't forget, you can put your questions in the Q&A um, box at the bottom and do list that college name in your question so they know who, who um, you're asking your question to. Uh, next up, you get the opportunity to hear from the University of Tampa.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Julia LaFond. Um, I am not the direct admissions counselor for Georgia. Um, I'm filling in for your counselor. Her name is Samantha Spezial. If you guys have any questions, I am able to answer them for you as well. But it is my um, honor to be able to speak with you all tonight about one of my favorite places on earth, the University of Tampa. Um, we are located right in the heart of downtown Tampa, Florida. Um, if you guys haven't been before, we are hosting on-campus visits right now. We would love for you guys to come and visit us, um, especially during this time of year. It's bright and sunny and 75 here, um, so not to brag, we do have great weather. Um, we, but we are a private institution. Um, we are also an independent campus, so we don't have any political or religious affiliations. We are a liberal arts university as well. Um, some of the more... Uh, popular majors that I get asked about normally is if we have architecture, engineering, unfortunately, we don't have either of those, um, but we do offer 200 other majors, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, but we are an urban environment with a campus feel. So what that means is that um, we kind of have the best of both worlds. We are right in the heart of downtown Tampa, but we are separated by the Hillsborough River, which you can kind of see in this image here. We do have a secluded campus with no major city streets running through our campus as well. Um, we were ranked one of the best colleges in the state of Florida um, this past year. We do have about 9,600 students on campus. We are considered a medium-sized uh, institution. Uh, about 1,000 of those students are graduate students as well. Um, so we do like to say we have students from Massachusetts to Madagascar. The University of Tampa um, actually represents 132 different countries from all 50 states. 70% um, of our students are from out of state. 20% are actually from Florida, and then the other 10% are international students. So you will meet people from all over the world here. I did attend UT um, and throughout my undergraduate time here, one of my best friends was actually from Mozambique. So it was really cool to get to understand his lifestyle and his culture and everything that he brought to Tampa with him and he got to share with us. Um, so yeah, continuing. So for your admissions requirements, what you'll need this upcoming year um, is an official high school transcript, an essay, and a letter of recommendation. We are a test optional quote unquote test line campus for the fall 2021 and spring 2022 semester. So if you're a senior, this will apply to you. Um, we have still not made the decision whether or not we'll continue being a test blind campus for juniors and sophomores that is still to be determined. Um, normally we look for about a 3.4 on weighted GPA. Um, and we do take a holistic approach uh, when evaluating students. So we'll take everything into consideration. We take above and below the GPA average. Um, we also accept resumes if you're interested in sending in a resume as well. Um, the minimum requirement for the letters of recommendation is one, but you're more than welcome to send in two or three. That's what I normally suggest. It just helps us get a better perspective of who you are as a student and um, how your work ethic is, things like that. So continuing some of our more um, popular majors, oops, excuse me, on campus, um, our international business, biology, finance and marketing, criminology and criminal justice, nursing, management, psychology, marine science, and allied health. Um, and we have a bunch of other different majors as well. Um, we were ranked number seven out of the top 25 business schools in America. We are AACSB accredited for our business school as well, which is the highest business accreditation any school can have. Um, and it's a perk. We also have that we are so close to downtown Tampa. We offer over a thousand different internship opportunities for our students um, within the Tampa Bay area, as well as on and off campus, paid and unpaid. So I highly recommend getting an internship in college no matter where you end up. Um, but for academics, we do have a one to 17 faculty to student ratio. Um, we really have smaller class sizes here with the average class size of being about 22 students. So you're not gonna be in a math class with 500 people here. Um, only 4% of our classes have 40 or more students. Those are gonna be more of your gen ed bio and your gen ed chemistry classes, things like that. Um, and 90% of our faculty um, have a PhD or a terminal degree in their field. So um, it means they're experts, they know what they're doing. Um, we don't have any TAs or GAs here. So you're getting um, the information from the best source. And kind of like I was talking earlier about our different accreditations, these are just some of the ones listed. I won't read them all to you, um, but you guys can see them right here. Kind of going a little bit more into financial aid um, and cost for the academic year. Uh, the average total comes out to about $42,000. We are actually one of the more affordable private institutions within the state of Florida. Um, all of our students are qualified or evaluated for a merit scholarship when they apply to UT. There isn't a separate application. Um, and 97% of our students do receive financial aid as well. 
Um, we do have a net price calculator on our website too. So you can go in and type in different specifications, GPA, if you wanna live on campus, and it'll actually give you a more accurate number of what you would be paying to attend UT. Um, so yeah, continuing. Uh, kind of like I was just talking about with those merit-based awards, um, since you guys would be incoming freshmen, if you're a junior or a senior, you guys could get anywhere in between four and $18,000 solely based off of that unweighted GPA um, and the rigor of forces that you took in high school. So those AP, IB, dual enrollment, or ACE credits. Um, this is a recurring scholarship for four years, as long as you maintain a minimum GPA, depending on the tier that you were awarded for your scholarship. Um, and the scholarship is determined at the time that you are accepted and presented a financial aid package. Um, this just keeps an even playing field for all of our students who do apply to UT. We understand that some students may or may not have the opportunity to bump their GPA or bump their test score, um, while other students it might go in the opposite direction. So um, again, these are um, some really awesome facts about UT and thank you for your time. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me or your admissions counselor, Sam. And I'm gonna pass it on to the next presenter. Thank you, Julia and the University of Tampa. Um, next up, you get the opportunity to hear from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Hey, my name is Terrence Banks. I'm the assistant director at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Very briefly, I'll talk to you about my institution and then I will get out of your hair. Couple of things I wanna highlight are campus, our classrooms, couple of prop living on UTC's campus. In terms of campus, UTC is a mid-sized institution with a little bit under 12,000 students on our campus, but it's very important to the city itself. Although we're located in downtown Chattanooga, UTC's campus is very unique experience and is completely separate from the city. But in terms of being involved and engaged in the campus, we are a division one school. So we definitely have sports on our campus and we always want our students to attend those sporting events. We host a lot of different activities on our campus so that students have easy access to engage in the campus. In terms of getting into our classroom, our requirements are 2.85 with at least 18 on ACT or 2.5 with the least of 21. If you meet these admission requirements, you'll automatically have to get to know the professors quite well. And a lot of these fraternities and sorority sports clubs in Guys, it seems like um, there were some technical difficulties. And so what we'll do is um, when he comes back on, we'll give him an opportunity to, to start again. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to move on to Christina at the University of Kentucky, if you're ready, Christina. Yes, thank you. I'll Okay. Thank you all for joining me. My name is Christina Lopez. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions on behalf of the University of Kentucky. And let's get started on the presentation. So we are a large public tier one flagship university located in Lexington, Kentucky. 
depending on where your zip code is in Georgia, will determine how far away that is, but typically it's on average about six hours away. So not too close and not too far. We're a pretty big university. We have a little bit under 22,000 undergraduate students, but we embrace our size because with a big school comes big opportunities. So we are not gonna hide behind the size of our school. Uh, we also recognize that even though we are a large school, we do create spaces for students to build a community. So it's very easy to make our school feel small. We're one of eight institutions in the entire country that has a full complement of academic programs and divisions located all on one campus. So this includes a medical school, a law school, MBA programs, agriculture, engineering, and so many other opportunities, very much grounded in research as well. You can see on this screen, we have over 200 majors and minors to choose from across 16 different academic colleges, a Lewis Honors College and a graduate school as well. Our student faculty ratio is 16 to one and 85% of our classes have 50 students or less. So that goes back to, you can still find your community on a big campus. 90% of our students at UK by the time they are seniors will have participated in research, internships, co-ops and study abroad. We have partnerships with over 460 countries, 460 programs across 70 different countries. So you'll be very busy, but you'll be able to apply what you learn in the classroom to a real world experience. Speaking to the admission side, which is my specialty as your admissions counselor. Uh, first, we are an early action institution. So that means we're non-binding and our application deadline is December 1st. That is the same every single year. So if you're a senior now, that's coming up. If you're not a senior, keep that deadline in the back of your pocket. Applying to UK is pretty easy. You can apply in one of three platforms all online, either our application, which is the UK application, the Common App or the My Coalition. In addition to the application, you'll submit your $50 application fee, your official high school transcript, and we are test optional for this year's senior class. So keep that in mind as well. Now we are holistic in our review process. So do spend time on the essay and other supporting documents. Even your student involvement is important. Uh, and keep in mind that December 1st is also our scholarship and our honors college deadline. Our scholarships can range all the way up to full tuition out of state. So it's very important that you keep in mind with that deadline. When it comes to the campus experience, this is where I think a lot of students from Georgia are choosing UK. Uh, we have over 550 student organizations, so plenty of ways to, to find your crew and to get involved. Uh, this includes 30% of our students who go Greek. This includes intramurals, religious and faith-based organizations. There's even organizations where students can foster a puppy on campus and help to train them to be a service dog one day. Who doesn't love a cute puppy? Uh, it is also a good time to be on UK's campus because we've gone through a $3.7 billion campus transformation in the last 10 years. This includes brand new housing, a new student center, a new dining facilities, athletic facilities, and you'll be able to enjoy all of that because all those projects are done. Within our housing, we have living learning programs if you want to live with other students that you can sort of have something in common with. And all of our beds in our housing come with Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Finally, we're home to D1 Athletics. We love being in the SEC. If you're looking for a high spirited campus to really get engaged in that way, it's very easy to find that on UK's campus. Thinking about location, I already gave you sort of a, a bit of a picture of how far we are from where we are in Lexington to Georgia, but currently we have over 600 students who are at UK from the state of Georgia. So you will not be the only one from here. And then bigger picture, 34% of all of our UK students are from out of state, representing all 50 states and over 100 countries. Freshmen are allowed to have cars on campus, but don't worry if you do not, it's very, very accessible. We even have a shuttle system on our campus that'll take students who live in the Metro Atlanta area from UK's campus to Metro Atlanta and back during those small breaks. So it's very, very accessible. And the city of Lexington is a really great city as well. It's less than five minutes away from our campus. It's the second largest city of the state. So there's plenty to do, plenty to see, whether it's you're into brunch or concerts or hanging out, or maybe you're more into the outside life. Maybe you like hiking and kayaking. We're also known to be the horse capital of the world. So it really is the best of both worlds when it comes to our location. Visiting campus is my invitation to you to do that. 
I know now more than ever, it's a little bit more challenging to hop in your car and go, but that link will take you to our website where you can schedule an in-person visit if you'd like. Those are available currently through December. They're Monday through Friday. But that link will also give you an opportunity to also visit virtually as well. So I invite you to, from the comfort of your home, you can be able to see our campus and see if it's a good fit for you. And then finally, here's my contact information. So I didn't say this in the beginning, but I live here in Atlanta full time. I'm here to support you. Hold on to that information. If you have any questions, please let me know and go cats. Thank you. Thanks, Christina, and thanks for, for hopping in. We have Terrence back now. And Terrence, um, you still have three minutes of your six minutes to go. So um, if you'd like to join us again, we know technology, man, like sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. So take back the show. All right, cool. So just to save some time, I'm just gonna go through the spiel without like logging into the presentation um, and just try to pick up where I think I left it. So the biggest piece is getting into the university. All you need is a 2.85 with at least an 18 on the ACT or 2.5 with at least a 21. If you meet those requirements, you're automatically admitted into the institution. And we're also doing tests optional this year. So the requirements are a minimum GPA of a 3.0 or higher and a letter of recommendation. And our scholarship opportunities start out at about a 3.2 and a 22 on the ACT and they move up from there. For our out-of-state students, we do offer a border state tuition discount where we'll take 50% off of your out-of-state tuition costs if you are one of our border state uh, students. And we offer a regional tuition discount for our border county schools. So students who live in that Northwest Georgia area that's pretty close to Chattanooga, then you can get 75% off your out-of-state tuition. And I just wanted to like highlight a super fun thing about our campus. We do have apartment style housing across the entire campus. So you don't have to worry about community style bathrooms, anything of the sort. Freshman students can drive their first year and we have a miniature indoor water park on our campus, which I think is pretty cool, but that's just me. And that's pretty much the university in a nutshell. And I appreciate you for letting me like hop back on to wrap up. I mean, a water park, that sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> I'd now like to um, invite all of our presenters to turn back on their cameras tonight and give you the opportunity, one, if there was a question that came through um, on the chat that you would prefer to answer verbally, um, you guys will have about 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds each to do that. Um, if there wasn't a question um, that you wanted to answer verbally, I would say either maybe offer a piece of advice to our seniors and their families. Maybe it's a fun fact about your campus. Maybe it's a cool campus tradition that you'd like to share. And we'll go in the same order um, of the presentations tonight. So Louisiana State University, you're up first. All right, great. Um, so there was one question um, that I did get the chance to answer, um, but it was more of general of you know, uh, how can you stand out? And as a junior, how could you start that process? Um, so definitely wanna talk a little bit about that. Um, it's never too early to start talking with your local admissions counselor. Um, we're always more than happy to answer any questions you may have, you know, even if it's, you know, how can you come visit us on campus and stuff like that. Um, especially for those of us who track demonstrated interest, the more you contact us, the more you come to our campus, uh, attend our virtual events, et cetera, um, the better that looks in your application, again, for those who track demonstrated interest because you're showing interest and uh, that's a good indicator that you would attend our university. Thank you so much. Wow, I mean, you're you're all real people and, pe and students can ask you guys questions. That's crazy talk. But I think it's worth repeating that all of these professionals on the screen are here to help you and never be shy to reach out to them directly because they're gonna be able to give you that expert advice on their institution. So don't rely on College Confidential or um, what someone's brother's sister said that they think is the truth. Um, ask them, they're real people and they wouldn't work in college admissions if they didn't really truly enjoy working with students. So next up, Tennessee Wesleyan. Can you hear me okay? Okay, wonderful. Um, so I guess that um, since he answered that question wonderfully, I'm just going to stick with um, a fun fact about us. Um, so every single year during our um, homecoming weekend, actually, we have this thing called Pumpkin Town within the city of Athens. Our entire community gets involved in it. Um, it's lovely because our 
uh, campus is actually located right within the downtown walking distance. So all of our students can walk down to Pumpkin Town, hang out, enjoy some of our vendors. Mayfield's Dairy is actually just down the street, so they'll bring out free ice cream. If people are playing music, it's a really fun time. Um, but then after all of that goes on throughout the day, we actually come back to campus and there's a lip sync event that our students can take advantage of. So um, it's really fun to watch. Um, all of our student life organizations actually put on this show. Some student athletes do it. Um, most of them are academic, um, academic majors or a specific student life organizations. Um, but it's a really fun time just to watch students have a really great time. And you wouldn't think that they actually put on a show, but they do, let me tell you. Um, and if you're ever interested in looking that up, it's on YouTube. So that's one of the most fun things about Tennessee Wesleyan, something I really wanted to share. I love traditions like that, especially when they involve the community. That's really fun. Yeah. Next up, let's hear from Mallory. Hey, so um, Alejandra answered that question that was in the box really well. So I'm just going to talk about um, some other things about the Citadel. So um, some fun traditions. Um, being a military college, we've been around since 1842. Um, we have traditions that go all the way back to that time. Um, our uniforms are still from back in the, you know, from the Civil War times. Um, so one of our biggest traditions is in October, um, our seniors receive their uh, band of golds, which is behind me here. That's a large um, band of gold. Um, each of our seniors receives these um, and then they run across the campus to our chapel and bang their band of golds against our chapel door. This has been happening for hundreds of years now. Um, so that's one of our biggest traditions. And the band of gold itself is just a very, it links all of our Citadel grads together. So if I am in a room and I see another Citadel uh, band of gold, it's just a conversation starter. And it just goes to show the network of our graduates. That's awesome. And let's next up, let's hear from the University of Tampa. Um, so probably one of my favorite traditions that happens in Tampa every single year is something called Gasparilla. Um, you guys may or may not have heard of it before, but the entire city of Tampa dresses up as pirates. Um, there's millions and millions of people that come into Tampa every single year. Everybody dresses up as pirates. Um, if you're not dressed up as a pirate, you're looked at kind of crazy. Um, but it's a really a great, awesome way for UT students to get involved within the community, whether it be volunteering or things like that. Um, another fun fact, we'll actually be hosting the Super Bowl this upcoming year in February. So um, definitely we got a lot going on in Tampa um, within the, the upcoming year. That is so fun. You had me at Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence, I can't wait to hear what you have to say next. So I was, uh, it's hard to like pick one, but I think the coolest thing that we do now on our campus is called the uh, Mox Flock Finley and that's where our football stadium is so we have our entire freshman class like run out into the field for our first home game before the football team comes out and that's like a big deal um just to be on that field personally so it's a pretty exciting time we'll take the students there they don't have a car you'll get a free t-shirt in the process we'll feed you so if nothing else you get food out of the deal so why not so that's one of my favorite things that we do on our campus Hey, that unites everyone and makes everybody feel like they're a part of the community. I love it. Um, University of Kentucky. So I'm gonna stick with the athletic theme that we had going on there at the last one. Um, as I said before, we're really proud to be in the SEC. We're most well known for our men's basketball team. Um, so a fun tradition kind of wrapped around that is Every year in the spring, we do something called Big Blue Madness, where students will literally camp out for at least 24 hours outside of our rep arena to be able to get a glimpse at the basketball team for the first time during our scrimmage games. And usually there's like tents and sleeping bags and it's a whole thing. Um, the coach will come out and all the players will come out and hand out like McDonald's breakfast the next morning. So um, it's a really fun event. It kicks off a really exciting spring. So we love, we love our Wildcats for sure. We'll even camp out for them. I love that school spirit. That's a lot of fun. Well, I would like to just uh, leave a quick piece of advice for seniors. Have fun this senior year. We all know that you have been through so much and you guys are so inspiring. With everything that's gone on, you have been resilient, you have been flexible, you have been um, worked harder and, and differently than we would have ever imagined you could. And so celebrate it. Celebrate the fact that you submit that first application, the last application. Celebrate the milestones along the way. Um, you've got this. 
And with that, um, I'd like to say thank you for joining us. Thanks um, for spending your, your hour with us this evening. As you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey. So we hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. Sign up for more sessions. There's even more tonight and tomorrow. So we'd love to have you. And the recording of this session will be available um, within a week at that same website where you registered. Thanks so much, everyone, and have a great evening.